Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. My name is Harry Evers, pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Santa Fe. And so glad that you're worshiping with us on this Sunday, June 27th. This is the final virtual worship service that we're producing. It's been almost 16 months since, since we began. Every single week we've had services that we could share together. No matter where you were, we were always back here at the church, either in the fellowship room, our Pope Hall, we call it, or in the sanctuary. For many weeks now, we've been away from the sanctuary because we had the floors done. And now we're back in the sanctuary as well. And next week, we'll be back live, July 4th, Independence Day. We'll be free from all the restrictions of COVID, at least here in New Mexico. And here in our sanctuary, we're back, back home again. Exiles returning. And so we join together in worship next week, but also this week, this final time when we have this format. Next week, we'll have a chance to have a hybrid service from that point on, and you can still see us on, on uh, YouTube. It'll be streamed live as well, and we'll get the information out more on how that all works. But, but for now, we're here. You're where you are. But we're all here to worship God as God is present with us. And so, with all of that said, let us worship God. The reading this morning is from the book of Ezra, chapter 6, verses 13 through 18. Then, according to the word sent by King Darius, the governor of the province beyond the river and their associates did with all diligence what King Darius had ordered. So the elders of the Jews built and prospered through the prophesying of the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, son of Edu. They finished their building by command of the God of Israel and by decree of Cyrus, Darius, and King Artaxerxes of Persia. And this house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. The people of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the returned exiles celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. They offered at the dedication of this house of God, 100 bulls, 
200 rams, 400 lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. Then they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. So endeth the reading of the word. Now we come to the time for the children and youth and all of us that are gathered here to watch this video. It's a time for the children's message, a time to blend in the scripture lesson from Ezra to what we're talking about, the theme and how it might apply to our lives. And so for a few weeks, I haven't had my dog Pippin with me. So Pippin, here, come on, let's go. He's not used to having this this format again. So I'm so glad you're here, Pippin. I'm so glad you're here with us. Nothing like a dog. And so I start with that, with Pippin returning. And of course, the scriptures we've had all June is the people returning back to the temple, back to Jerusalem, back to their homeland after, well, you know, two generations, they say. And our scripture today is when the temple was finally completed. 516 BC. They left, the last group, a middle group or so, left around 586 BC. So 70 years they were in exile and they finally returned. <clears throat> and they said that they returned with rejoicing, with much thanks. And so today I'm talking about our return, Pippin's return, and what we do about that. There's an old story I told years ago <clears throat> of a young man who was accepting an award 
at a high school graduation. And he said, first of all, I'm going to thank my dog. And he went on with his speech, and people kind of wondered what in the world is going on, what in the world. He wants to thank his dog. And they looked back at the transcript of the speech, and he said, actually, he said, I want to thank my God. And so I think we're doing, we're thanking our God this day. But we're also thanking our dogs for being with us these last 16 months, faithful, by our side during a pandemic. I want to thank Pippin for being here for many of our worship services, faithful, loyal, always here as a worshipful God, dog, yeah, worshipful God, dog, <laughs> get mixed up. But I want to think, how can we thank others who have helped us through this exile, through these 460 some days that I counted up since we were last together in worship? And so we thank Pippin, of course. But I want to thank Raymond. I don't know if you know Raymond, he's the one behind the camera. Every single time we've had a worship service, <clears throat> Raymond's been behind the camera and making sure it all happened. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, Raymond. I want to thank his wife, Linda, our music director, and Travis and David Beatty and David Solomon, the choir, all the liturgists, all the preachers besides me, all those who made sure worship happened. And I want to thank all those who kept the building going. Think about all the people who made sure that it was clean. And for the preschool, they never missed a day. And they worked diligently, faithfully, lovingly with the children, all the teachers, Ann Liley, the director, thank you so much. For the people who kept the outside of the building looking so good and, and transforming our landscape, thank you for that, the building and grounds people, property people. For all those in our mission work, all our teachers, all the people that make up this congregation, we have deep thanks and gratitude for continuing during the exile. And then we welcome you back. You know, in our story today, I'll mention it again, but in our story today, they made 714 sacrifices. Well, you know what? Maybe we need to make 714 thank yous to people. I, I mentioned maybe 15, 20 people. We have a lot more thanks to give. So that's our message today, is to give thanks for all those who walked with us during this pandemic and for those we may have lost, for all those who persevered, kept the faith, kept the church going, kept mission alive, and kept our worship services available to do every single week. So thank you all. Let's wave up and thank you. We also have a blessing, our blessing, the one we know so well. I'll begin. In body, mind, and spirit, may you be well this day, and may you be strong for the work of healing in the world.
We come now to the message. It comes from the sixth chapter of Ezra, verses 13 through 18. Again, these scripture readings this month of June has not been part of the lectionary. These, these have been extra. They've been part of the history of, of Judah as they return from exile in Babylon. And so we've had three weeks of wonderful stories that I've never really focused on in my ministry of 37 years. And finally, hearing what it means to be in exile and then to return home. Great stories. And so let us then begin with a prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving God, holy God, we come to you this day as exiles. We come to you this day returning home. And so be with us then as we hear your word once again. In our minds, our thinking, eyes and our seeing, ears and our hearing, lives and our living. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've learned a lot in this time of exile, have we not? I counted up about 465 days that we have been in this pandemic exile. Week by week, month by month, going through it, wondering if it would end, how it would end, losing people along the way, losing some of our previous life, and then wondering what life would be like after it's, it's mostly over. We're getting to that point now. It's not all over. Of course not. We have to be diligent, careful in the days ahead. But we do see people returning home, the exiles returning home from Babylon, from our own Babylon, back to Jerusalem, our own Jerusalem, back to the sanctuary, back to the temple. And what do we do then? What will it look like and how do we respond then to this great day as we begin that return home? Well, first of all, I think we've always been in exile. I think the Christian faith has always had those moments of exile, not just in Babylon and not just during these days of the pandemic. I think throughout history it's always been we've gone into exile. We haven't thought things through well enough. We've gotten the wrong side of issues. We've not done things following the ways of Jesus. We've, we, we've allowed slavery to happen, let's say. We haven't really worked for civil rights as we should have. We got all hung up on different issues that weren't part of the reign of God. We, we treated people poorly. All those moments are exile, moments of exile that we need to return home from. And so I think there's a rhythm that returning home and then going back into exile, not quite getting it right, and then being taught once again what it means to be followers of Christ, people of God, in our own day and time. And that's where we find ourselves today, returning home after an exile trying to recover what we may have lost or forgotten. So just a few ideas from this sixth chapter. We left last week in chapter four, and that's when people were starting to cause problems. They, they, they were going against the exiles returning. They didn't like what they were doing. They tried to subvert them. They tried to discourage them. And what it means in Hebrew is to weaken one's hands. It's one of those times when People had a hard time getting back to their old way of life. This passage may help us because from the end of chapter, 20, uh, chapter 3 in Ezra to our chapter 6, 23 years have basically passed. From 539 when Cyrus decreed that they could come back home to returning home and then to 516 is when the temple was finally finished. And that's what these words in chapter 6 are all about, the completion of the temple. It wasn't easy. In fact, for many of those years, they neglected it. They forgot about it. They went to their own homes. They dealt with that. They dealt with their own lives and did not work on the temple rebuilding. How often that happens with us, that we often forget what is a priority, what might get us back on track, what may get us so that we might feel fulfilled in life and we scatter and we do things that uh, take us away. But here's what happened in chapter 6. What they found out was they needed people to help them. And so there were prophets coming in chapter 5, prophets, to help them understand what it might mean to be 
in exile who return home. Who are our prophets today? Who may help us learn what it might mean to come back into a culture and then to transform that culture, to declare what was wrong with the old culture, and then to lead us to a new way of living with one another? When you think of prophets, think of prophets that are speaking truth to power, prophets that are helping us understand that violence doesn't work anymore, never did, but that we shouldn't take it with us into this new world of ours, that injustices, oh, that's, that's the old days. May we forget all that we did so that we might bring justice to the world finally. Oh, not forget. We can never forget, but now may we work to, be, to end racism. May we work to end discrimination. May we take down those walls. All of those ideas about what it might mean to live as the people of God. But we need prophets to help us with that. People whose voice works through all the clutter and helps us remember what it means to be people of compassion and love. So that's the first idea, simply that prophets are people we need to listen to, look for them, listen for them. Another idea is it doesn't happen quickly. As I mentioned earlier, it took 70 years from the time that they actually were in exile to the time of the rebuilding of the temple. 70 years. Think back 70 years, it was 1951. It was the height of, I think, the height of Christianity's popularity, at least in our generations. People were back to church after World War II. They were building churches. Children were all around, young families. It was a whole sense of the whole context of, of life after World War II and how we look back to that saying those are the heydays of Christianity. Well, I think we can get to such days now that maybe the heydays are before us and maybe there were never any heydays there never was any great moment when Christianity was, was so understood and so well practiced. Maybe those days are before us. Maybe they're right before us. Maybe we then need those prophets to help us understand what it means to live in such days, knowing of God's presence so clearly and so completely. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful? And so here we are about to come back. We left this sanctuary March 8th, 2020. We had a congregation, it was growing and people were coming and we were doing well and then all of a sudden something stopped. Well, we're coming back, I'm not sure who will come back with us. And that was the question they had back in the days of Ezra. Not everybody came back. Not everyone came back in the same way. And not all the tribes of Israel, all 12 of them, were accounted for. Many had left a long time before this, back in 722, 721 BC, when the Assyrians took over, and, and 10 tribes out of the 12 were consumed by that Assyrian Empire, and not to ever really mingle back into the two tribes from the south, the ones of Judah. And so, you know, we can look back hoping everyone will show up again. And they certainly did here. They mentioned the 12 tribes, knowing full well there were only two in that area. But I say we look at the whole people of God. Whoever comes back is who we need. Whoever will join us is who we need to have part of this uh, fellowship. And so I look forward to welcoming people back. Whoever you are, join us. Join with your friends, join with us with new friends. Be part of what we're doing here with the excitement and hope of what it means to follow Christ. And so it is indeed a new day after years of exile for the Babylonian exiles, after months of exile for us. Welcome back. We'll do so with great thanks as we talked about in the children's sermon. 714 ways to thank people. Start now. Find ways, because if we were to share those thanks, 714 for each of us, imagine multiplying that with the number of people that will be part of this fellowship. 
The world needs that thanks and gratitude. The world needs then that compassion. May we start that work today with great thanks and with great thanks to God for being with us all along. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so we come to our offering, and our offering begins not here, but it begins back in Cuba. We need to remember our Cuban brothers and sisters who are going through such a hard time. The pastor in our sister church is talking with the ground to Cuba. Well, we understand that her mother and grandmother uh, have COVID, suffering from it. And she's been going door to door, just trying to visit people. They've really been hit hard by the COVID pandemic. Um, but they give thanks every day, and they remember us every Sunday as we remember them. We have an offering to help them. They've never asked for our help, but we offer it freely. Helping them through these difficult times, economically uh, difficult times as well as with the, the pandemic. And so all of June, we've had a COVID, sorry, a Cuba offering uh, during this time of COVID for them. And we still are continuing that offering. If you make it back to church and inside the building, you'll see that there is uh, a bulletin board. Uh, it's actually in the lobby uh, with pictures and information about the offering and about the church down there. And there's a way to give as you come in in, in person. Also a way to give online. Also a way to give just simply by sending your gifts to the church and we'll make sure that it gets to our friends in Cuba through our presbytery. So thank you for considering a gift to Cuba, to the church down there. And thank you then with deep gratitude for the gifts that you have continued to give throughout the pandemic. You have been so very faithful. And please know that they are very much appreciated, greatly appreciated. And these gifts go to the work of this church and to the ministry uh, that serve people in our community and mission to the wider community, how much that has been needed and used during these times. So thank you for sending us your gifts. And I offer these envelopes that had gifts in them to the glory of God, to you in thanksgiving, to the people who are the beneficiaries of your gifts, Cuba Partnership. You see these envelopes are coming through. Thank you, all these months, thank you. Next week we'll be offering our gifts in person. But how grateful we are then that you have stayed faithful still, that our community of faith is still doing great work in our community, in the world. And so we simply say thanks be to God, amen.
In this moment here among us, God is listening. God is loving. God wants to know what is in our hearts. So God, we bring to you our gratitude for love, beauty, and kindness. And we bring our concerns for your people and your world. We pray for those on our parish prayer list, and we pray for our sister church. Loving God, hasten the day when the virus will have run its course. Quicken scientists to develop medications and vaccines. Call out the best instincts of your people, love, neighborliness, compassion, and a sense of caring for every member of your beloved community on earth. We pray out of the depths to you, O God of hope. And please pray with me the Lord's Prayer by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
come now to the benediction. This last benediction with our video worship services with Pippin in my arms. Good words to go from this place. Good words to go from our exile all these many months. Back into the world, back into in-person worship services, and I hope you'll join us next Sunday for that. And so, let us go forth into the world in peace. Cleanse of our sins and loving one another. And do not render evil for evil, but support the weak and strengthen the faint-hearted. And remember, there are 714 ways to thank people, as there were 714 sacrifices back then in the days of Ezra, in the days of the temple being rebuilt and then celebrated. Oh, may we celebrate this day with our thanksgiving. May we celebrate this day with our compassion and our mercy and our forgiveness and our excitement and our joy. May there be shots of joy. And may we remember a God who has been with us each and every moment along this journey of ours and who will be with us still and faithful still and how we'll be back together again as the people of God in this community of faith here in Santa Fe. I hope you will join us if you can, either still through video or in person. What a great homecoming that will be next Sunday. And so until then, may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, go with us, remain with us until... We meet again.